putting people off of their land. A stop has got to be put to it. And all the way around them, you see two, three vehicles with uh, armed soldiers in there. And then I'm wondering, well, who am I am? I'm not in Afghanistan. Tonight's top story, a tense week-long showdown between the U.S. federal government and supporters of a Nevada cattle rancher. The fight centers around the grazing rights of rancher Cliven Bundy. The U.S. government contends Bundy has been illegally grazing his cattle of, on federal public lands without paying grazing fees. Bundy claims his rights to graze the land go back to the 1800s. Beckett Adams from TheBlaze.com joins us from Washington. He's been following this story. And uh, Beckett, a, a lot of uh, bluster on both sides and a very tense standoff that could have ended badly. Instead, it, it seems to have ended rather peacefully. Yes, uh, I, I think the big fear with this, with many people on both sides, uh, both supporters and uh, the federal government, is I think everyone was rightfully terrified that this could have been another Waco, Texas or Ruby, uh, Ruby Ridge scenario. But so, thankfully, over the weekend, it was avoided. The federal, I'm sorry? They, they, they pulled back, right? They did. Yeah. Over the weekend, the federal government uh, decided, they announced that they would cease all operations. Federal agents left, and they released about 389 heads of cattle that they had impounded. All right, so here's the statement from Neil Corns, the U.S. Director of Bureau of Land Management. It said, based on uh, information about the conditions mm -hmm. on the ground and in consultation with law enforcement, we have made the decision to conclude the cattle gather because of serious concern about the safety of employees and members of the public. So this is being described in, in all kinds of ways, uh, that, that this is a showdown over ranchers' rights, that this is, uh, involves Harry Reid and uh, an attempt to put up a green energy plan. What's the truth in, in the middle of this? Uh, does, does Clive and Bundy have any claim to the land or at least the grazing uh, portion of it? Because, uh, like I say, there's a lot of bluster on all sides here. Well, I think the thing that we need to focus on first and foremost discussing this is that uh, the state of Nevada and the federal government, the law, recognizes that property as being the property of the federal government. The United States government owns that land according to Nevada and according to the law. A U.S. District Court ruled in 2013 that that land has belonged to the U.S. government since 1848 when Mexico ceded it in the Treaty of uh, Guadalupe Hidalgo. So th that needs to be first and foremost at the front, because anything going, uh, going forward, that one of the big problems, I think, with the story is there's been a lot of misinformation, obviously, but I think there's been a common misunderstanding that he owns the land. He never actually even said he owns the land. He argues that he has certain preemptive rights to the land, one of them including the right to forage. Now, what happened is, in 1993, the United States government, which owns the land, decided it wasn't interested in having uh, ranchers graze anymore, and that it'd rather turn it into a protective habitat for the desert tortoise. What they did then is that they got the ranchers, the federal government, got the ranchers in the area and they paid them for their grazing permits. They basically paid them, uh, they bought them out. Now they Bundy, okay. he claims, um, his argument, his argument is that his family has been there for generations and he didn't want to be bought out. He refused it the next year, 1994. His uh, permit was canceled and then that's, this has been going on since then. This is about a 21 year long uh, argument between him and the federal government. He doesn't uh, recognize their authority on that land, although the state of Nevada says it's the government's land. And Bundy, another note that's worth uh, uh, mentioning is that he used to actually pay the BLM. It wasn't until 1993 when the BLM said, uh, sorry, thanks, but no thanks, we're not, you know, turn in your permit, we'll give you some cash because we're not going to use this for grazing anymore. That's when he started his argument that they don't own that property, it's, it's Nevada's property. But that argument has been thrown out of court repeatedly with the state of Nevada saying, no, actually, no, they do own it. Okay, but there, are, there, there were a lot of ranchers who came out in support of them saying, look, this is uh, uh, the tactics of the federal government are, are definitely overreach, you're going too far in this. And there were Nevada officials saying this land should be turned back to the state of Nevada because this is how we'd like to operate the land. Exactly. I think one, uh, one of the other things that both sides can agree with, and the federal government implicitly agreed with this on Saturday when it you know, waved the white flag and retreated, is that its handling of this was absolutely unprecedented, uncalled for, and ham-fisted. I mean, a, a, a small army of 200 armed agents, a fleet of retrofitted uh, SUVs, not exactly the sort of measured response you would expect from uh, you know, federal agents. Not, this isn't the military. These aren't, technically spe speaking, even law enforcement officials. So I think a lot of people can agree it's with the that. Bureau the Bureau of too, Land is the state. Management. Yes, the state. 
<laughs> you don't expect know, these exactly. guys That's to like, have tanks. It's like having the EPA uh, kicked down your door. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So, well, except there weren't exactly tanks there. There were retrofitted SUVs as far as that has been <laughs> confirmed. The, your other point, though, is that, yes, the state, the state does agree that the land should be turned back. That's why in 2013 they created a task force. It consists of 17 members. They're commissioners from all the counties. Their sole purpose in life is to figure out a legal means of transferring control of those areas from the feds to the state. And in doing that, the, in creating that task force, Nevada has admitted, yeah, that state, that property isn't ours. We would like to find out how to get it under our control. And so that's a legitimate legal means. I think the problem that we are seeing with the Bundy situation is that he's arguing that he somehow has a right that, that goes okay, over well, the federal claim that, that's recognized by law. Uh, two quick things. We've got about a minute left. One, do uh, cows eat the desert mm -hmm. tortoise? And two, is Harry Reid actually trying to put up a, uh, a green power uh, project? He and his son trying to put up a green power project right next to where the, the Bundys were ranching. As far as the first claim, the, uh, the BLM does say that uh, the cows make it dangerous for the tortoise, but that seems like an odd claim considering that I believe the two have lived uh, uh, side by side in that area for, for years. So that would be something that requires a little more uncovering. The second point, Harry Reid, as far as my research has shown, shown, there's no hard connection between him and what we saw last week. Yes, him and his son were involved in a deal with a Chinese-owned company to build a $5 billion solar farm, but... The important thing is that deal was shelved in 2013, so that's, I don't know why the feds would be removing cattle for something that's not happening. And even if the deal did go through, it would have been built about 213 miles south of uh, the Gold Butte uh, ranch or grazing area where Mr. Bundy's cattle are. So any sort of claims that the Democratic majority leader uh, is involved in the, uh, what was the forceful removal of the man's cattle, I think is a very thin claim at best. All right, uh, Becca, thanks for getting to the facts for us, and uh, can, we'll continue to follow this with you at theblaze.com.